My name is Julius. I'm from the Batwa. I'm uh, aged 25 years of age. I've taken an advantage of going to school. When I was young, I saw how my fellow Batwa, like I've been borrowing knowledge from my grandparents who passed away when she was 114 years. I've, I've been asking myself, like, how the battle used to live in the in the forest and this is when i've been contacting my fellow battle including my relatives my fellow battle like doing that and i've got much information from the battle and that is how i came to start this organization or that program to help the battle when it is being run by the battle themselves so what's your organization uh, the organization or the program that we have in it is called the battle indigenous empowerment program mm. and it started by the battle scholars i myself i took a lead to start that program or organization mm. we have battle scholars who have joined us over 30 battle from different communities from different presses however we are working in one with two communities but we hope to work with the battle wherever they are in the whole country. Mm. But this is just a start, which why we started this small thing, what we call the battle empowerment program. But in the future, we are planning to register, making it a bigger organization, and then it can be known by worldwide. People have been asking, who are the battle? The battle, this is, this is what I can say. But we are known to be the first people to live in the mountains and in the forest and the mountains of Vilunga and Windy National Park, Prasichuya Forest. So they used to live in those places where they used to live on uh, fruits. They were known as hunt gatherers. So Batwa would be also known as the pygmies. Pygmies, I'm coming. I'll maybe yeah. explain why, that, how, yeah. how, how pygmy Just came. Just so people out there that yeah, know. Yeah. So. yeah, I'll come to know, maybe yeah. tell why, mm. how pygmy came. And yeah, please, the pig, please. Yeah. So, the Batwa, that is the local name. Mm. So they used to live in the forest and then move in the forest looking for fruits because the Batwa are known as hunt gatherers and fruit gatherers. Mm. So moving in the forest, they used to look for fruits like Marianza's fruit, other fruits and whatever they would find sweet they would eat them like thick berries those were like also fruits and the fruits were very much important helpful to their body they acted as medicine they, uh, like my youngest fruit used to help for easy digestion of food when it comes to food other fruit the tubers they would feed on uh, wild yams and other tubers then killing animals people have been asking but we used to kill animals and that's why we evicted them from the forest but that is not the point the battle we are the conservation of the forest they used to conserve this forest if i can talk if i can take back have a look to how i got the story from my grandmom this is when my grandmom told me when they used to live in the forest as they were moving in the forest the men would go for hunting the women stay behind caring for their babies looking and taking all that kind but when the, the men have gone for hunting, they would not kill these gorillas, chimpanzee, snake. They would respect those three animals. They would kill the rest of the animals, but they would not kill the young animals. If they find a young animal in the trap, they would try to rescue that young animal to go away. Mm. Reasons why they would not kill these three animals, why they respected them. The chimpanzee was very much helpful to these battle people. The battle would never come to know how to discover kind of food in the forest, like these fruits. A mutter would never know that to come to the end that honey was the sweet thing until he came to learn from the chimpanzee. This is the story I got from my grandma. My grandma told me that was one season when they're in the forest. They had looked for the animals to eat, like setting up snares. They never caught anything. They never killed anything. So it was like a tragic way of being hungry in the forest. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when they went, like they were moving in the they would the battle were like nomadic specialism, moving from one place to press. So when they were living in those presses, like in one press that killed animals, and the animals had moved to another presses. So they were hungry, and then 
the motor went to hunt. When he was hunting, he never found anything for almost a month. No fruit, nothing, totally nothing. This is when he landed on the chimpanzee, was comfortably sitting in a tree, eating the fruits very happily, and then the, the motor got a spear, wanted to kill the chimpanzee. He got the spear and shot it to the chimpanzee. Unfortunately, the spear passed aside. The chimpanzee was also annoyed, got Amarianthus fruit, what we call the word pineapple, a chifa in our local language. He got it and threw it to the motor. The motor survived also. Then the motor said, I was being killed by the chimpanzee. Then he went and picked the fruit to test if the fruit was sweet. And then this is when he came closely to chimpanzee and then started apologizing. Please, I'm sorry. I don't want to kill you. Let us be friends so that we can keep together forever. Then you keep showing me other things to eat. And then that is how the motor came to know, used to see the chimpanzee harvesting honey. Chimpanzee are very good at harvesting honey. Mm. And then that is when the motor came to, to know that honey was also sweet. So from that day, the battle would respect the chimpanzee as brothers and sisters. Mm. They would respect them and would not kill them. That is why. The Batwa, when they live in the forest, they would not kill the gorillas because the gorillas were like, they, they resembled like gorillas. Okay. All resembling. Ah, yes. So, they would sleep like, if the gorillas are sleeping like five, 10 meters out from there, then the Batwa would also sleep like maybe 10 meters out from them. Then, they learned how to make these nests the butler never knew how to like make this nest uh, how to show love to their babies the butler were like green they never knew anything about all that about so they said all oh, this what we're doing we, we, need, we really need to do something so that day the butler really liked that gorillas because they took them to be brothers and sisters to the extent when the butler are fed on the meat and they are satisfied they would be dancing and then the gorillas would come in the dance. So this brought love to them. Then the snakes, the bat would not kill them. Yeah, why? Snakes. They would not kill the snakes. The reason was, in the forest, the snakes were our ancestral gods. The bat never had churches, and the god was in the form of the snake, and called Nyagasani. So it was very much respected when the bat were living in the forest. So the bat would come, and see these like when they are, they need blessings they would come and slaughter come bring to these animals to the snake to these other animals uh, what they would kill so that when they go tomorrow for hunting they have more blessing for killing when they have like marriage they have more blessings when they want to do anything they have more blessing from their god that is why they would not kill the snakes do they ever use the snakes venom for arrows to to kill animals or anything? Do in the use... in the forest? Yeah. In the forest the yeah. hunting the hunting was like this. They used they, they had three types of killing animals. One they would set up snares. And not I don't call them snares. I'm just yeah, using sure. yeah, it's called traps. So they used to set up traps of which traps they would some of them they would target animal animal footprints. Uh, animal neck and another type they had it was a chiliba where they would bring heavy logs and when an animal is passing down screamingly hits an animal and then it dies. I wish you were in the in our culture center and maybe see everything like that I'm just taking I'm telling out maybe people can come what I'm like explaining here yeah. then they come to understand what we are like talking about in our Batwa Culture Heritage Center. Mm. Yeah, so? So, actually, the, tell me now, going back to what you're actually doing, the cultural center, what you've established, tell me more about this. Yeah, in the Batwa Culture Center, when you come to visit us, you expect to learn how the Batwa used to do medicinal herbs. The Batwa were very much important, we are very they were wise and even knowledgeable to the extent that the Batwa used to, to have medicinal herbs. When they have like these type of worms, they, I have learned them from them. Even myself, I don't go for like dwarming, I just go and pick medicine for tapeworms. And it has helped me. I've not paid anything. I'm very comfortable. And they still practice and use it even up to now. Mm. So medicinal herbs is part of in our cultural center. 
We also have the type, different types of how the Batu used to live. They had different types of houses, as a tree house, um, house for boys, for girls, all that kind. They have them. They also, we also have cave, how they used to live under caves. Caves were known as permanent houses for the Batwa. In the forest called the Batwa, when they were moving like press to press, they would not set up like these permanent houses. Mm. It would cost them more time. And when they are moving from one place to another. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So they were very comfortable. So that is one way, another thing you can learn. And we started this cultural center majorly when we had started this organization. The major thing we were focusing on, we were focusing on uh, how we can our culture is almost dying out, so we wanted to pass over the, the rest of the knowledge to the coming generation. And that is why we have this culture. We didn't start it for tourism purposes. The major purpose is to pass over the knowledge, what these old but have, to the rest, to the younger generation. Like me, I've been attached and I feel see, seeing my culture dying out. I felt I was like, I have to be in this. Myself, I started this organization as a battle scholar when I was working somewhere and then got raised the money and then it was passionate to me that I have to start this. Though we have many organizations and many charities in Uganda doing this, but to the research, what people have made, they use us the way, if you can see how people go to do the border trekking, how much do you think the gorillas earn from the border trekking? I have no idea. Nothing. How much do you think the chimpanzees earn from this chimpanzee trekking? Nothing. Still, other people are using us. Like they say, they are making organizations, they are making charities to help the battle. But still, much bigger things go to the people who have made this. But to me, as a, a person who is from the battle, I feel making this will help my fellow battle. It, and, and it really makes sense to a mutual coming to me face to face and directly asking me where I can help, what would be the problem. I think and I've seen working, like seeing all the battle who may fear, even the battle who have gone to school, they totally fear some of the things like going competition of jobs. They cannot go and look for jobs due to marginalization in the country. Mm. And how many battle are there in Uganda? To the population census that took place in 2014, we have a total of battle 600, 200. How much? 6200. So 62,000? Yeah, 62,000. That Batwa. is, but, yeah, that and then, was, that was. in Rwanda and Congo also Batwa, no? Yeah, they are Batwa. We have, and there, uh, was it, uh, they estimated that was 1-1, one, one, and then 0-0. Zero, zero. So it's it's one 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 million one hundred thousand. Yeah, that is was estimate. Right. They estimated that was the population census that took place in two thousand in two thousand fifteen. And the, the Batwa I've seen seem to be very impoverished. They seem to be very in bad circumstances, living in bad circumstances. The Batwa, they don't they don't have money. They don't they. I get the impression that the Batwa are very poor. That they have no money. Yeah, the battle don't have money. Uh, it's the question comes like this: How are battle living and earning a living to this to current situation? So the battle, how they are earning a living in this current situation? They work for others. Even me, when I was a little from very young, I used to go and work. Like I used to go with mama, moving around the communities, working for food, all that. Mm -hmm. That is one way how the battle are earning the living. Mm -hmm. The secondary those who are to the age of 70 to 70 and 70, 80s, they go around house by house begging for food. Oh. The rest of the Batwa who are nearby tourism presses, they do it doing entertainment, looking for money right. from the tourists. When they do it in dancing, they expect like some money from these tourists coming to entertain them. So, and other way how the Batwa are getting their living from these charities that have been formed from different organizations mm. they come and they give support to them mm. so that is how the battle are getting support currently even me when i went to school i got a support from one of the charities uh -huh. and that is when i developed my vision to come and start what i'm doing currently which is the cultural center for battle people 
The Batwa Culture Centre, but it is under that program I've told you what we call the Batwa Indigenous Empowerment Program that I'm setting up. I need to register, complete its registration, and make it worldwide known. Um, as I've told you, I, I what I'm doing is so, a wish of the Batwa. If you had three wishes now, what would your three wishes be? Anything? Like, if you had some Batwa spirit, a serpent spirit came to you in your dream and said, okay, what what are the three wishes? The first priority I focus on is education to my fellow Batwa. Mm. When they're educated, I think where I'm, where I'm, what I'm doing tomorrow, other Batwa educated, they can take a step. That is the priority number one. Mm. The second priority, the second priority I'm looking at is having a bigger land and then we do what we call the Batwa Kalicho Center, where the Batwa, the old Batwa can can be and then the young ones can come always learn about the Batwa Kalicho thing. Their heritage. Yeah, the heritage. The Telling the stories, the language, making kind of uh, all that kind in that and then having medicinal herbs that we can learn sometimes and then we can maybe all learn from that center being bought by the battle and being managed by the battle themselves right and then the third one the third one uh, I'm, I'm looking at if the battle are now out of the forest what they should have make like a skill and to some of the battle if you try to tell them, take them to school, they may not manage to go and study and complete the level of the university. So I was like proposing making a technical, what we call a uh, technical school, te technical oh, school. Skill a skilled sk skill for the battle, the when where they can go and learn. Even they are they are skilled at making weaving baskets. Mm -hmm. The young girls can come and learn from the, their grandparents, from their parents how to carve these gorillas still it can be one way of making a living like there could be a market of the butter selling the crops outside like in different countries i think it would be another way of earning for the butter